Okay, great. On oh, 404, there you go. Okay. So today's lecture is about something really, really interesting and fun. And I'm hoping that you will all give a shot to trying this yourselves sooner or later. How many of you have heard of Kickstarter? Raise the hands. Excellent. Most of you. How about Indiegogo? Killer. All right. GoFundMe. Few less, but most of you still. Okay. What about CrowdRise? And like one. Okay, exactly. So uh, these are crowdfunding sites. What do you know about crowdfunding? You get people online. Mm -hmm. An idea to a way to get people to give you money online. An investment in okay, that exist an investment in something that doesn't exist yet. Now that's fascinating. What other thoughts are there? Taylor What's that? Taylor Swift donated what? Taylor Swift donated fifteen thousand dollars on GoFundMe to a firefighter. Okay, and what's over here for crowdfunding? Were you trying to say about crowdfunding? Okay, anybody else? What are they? Places where people can pester you so that you will give them money? Facebook. Facebook, what's that? Okay, what I'm actually, and this is kind of interesting to me, what I'm actually getting from all of you right now is that there's a lot of different definitions to crowdfunding as far as you're concerned, and that they're for different purposes. Why would someone run a crowdfunding campaign? Yes? If they wanted to make a potato salad, if they wanted to make a potato salad. Yes, bravo, that frickin' potato salad. My husband will not let that potato salad go. He's like, baby, you only raised half the amount of money that that guy with that potato salad did, and you've been working all long and all year long in your book. So I was like, yeah, that's, that's true. The potato salad thing just frickin' kills me. All right, what, what other things than potato salad? What, what does it mean? Why do people run crowdfunding campaigns? Depends on the project. Depends on the project. Some people okay. Know, Mm -hmm. And see what happens. Yeah, business people that don't have any idea what they're doing and um, just pitch an idea just to see if it will work. A very good example of that is the first time I ever ran a Kickstarter, and that sort of worked, which was great. Uh, yeah, I know too much to ever try a, a, a thought like that again. I like crowdfunding campaigns. I like them a lot. Um, I run them because I think that a clear deliverable is a great way to go about making a living. Sometimes we have no real way of telling what, what we call ROI, return on investment in our own time and the jobs that we do are. And if you can create something on Kickstarter or on a crowdfunding plat platform and you make it and you deliver it, you know you're done. You know you did a good job. You earned that money, right? It's, it's a feeling that I actually really enjoy having. It's one of the reasons I like tech contracting too. Because when there's a clear ROI, when there's a clear deliverable, a clear metric for your performance, you can deliver on a goal and know you accomplished something. Yeah, Jonathan? Yes, and then there are people that don't deliver on that, and sometimes they don't even return the money, and that's a chance that you take in crowdfunding, right? If you're going to give people money, it's it's a promise to do something, but that doesn't necessarily mean that people follow through on it all the time, right? So I've seen and participated in Kickstarters where people haven't been able to deliver. Um, I. I like the platforms and I like the transparency, but the truth is is that what crowdfunding tends to be is a story that you tell. And the better the story, the more money. Almost irrelevant of what the actual product is, fascinatingly enough. Okay, so the three things we're going to talk about today are, first of all, some sample great crowdfunding campaigns that have happened out there and why. And you totally have wrecked my day on spoilers because I was going to bring up the potato salad. Now I'm not going to bring out the potato salad anymore because we've already talked about the potato salad. We'll talk about some great crowdfunding campaigns out there, why they work, why they don't. The second one are problems that you can have with them, and the third are how each and every one of you can run your own crowdfunding campaign for a small amount of money, which basically, if your aunts and uncles like you, is going to succeed. Fair enough? Okay. So the first thing, great crowdfunding campaigns. Why do some crowdfunding campaigns go viral? Insert potato salad anecdote here, which I totally can't do anymore. That's fine, all right? What about the woman who um, got a really passive-aggressive note from her neighbors once because she had a super gay front yard? The rainbow front yard, you remember that? And the neighbor said, your, your front yard is too gay for this neighborhood. 
And I was like, that is a gay front yard, and I'm going to give this woman $5 to make it even more gay. Paint a rainbow on your house right now. I love it. It's beautiful and brilliant. This woman had, had um, hung, I think, rainbow lights in her front yard that said, I think, Ohana, peace, or something like that. In Is that family? family. Oh, great. Yes, exactly. Um, and the... The, the internet saw this really horrible passive aggressive note. And okay, it was just straight up aggressive that a neighbor, an, an anonymous neighbor, and I hate anonymous neighbors. I mean, they're, you're a neighbor, but you're not sure which one it is. So you don't know who to punch. So it's an anonymous neighbor sends you this note, like your neighborhood or your, your yard is too gay for the family friendliness in this neighborhood. And I was like, oh, I will give this woman $5 and buy a can of paint for her. Make it, make it yet more rainbow-like, I love it. Make, be glitter filled, you know? <laughs> and, um, the internet raised her like $35,000 on the strength of that note on a, I think it was a GoFundMe, all right? Why would something like that go viral so fast? And you may feel free now to tie this into the conversation that we had yesterday about online mobs. Why would something like that happen? Why do you share something like that with your friends? How many of you shared it yourselves? Okay, so a couple of you have actually shared this campaign online, okay? Why would you... If, even though you don't know anything about this woman, share that and be like, everybody should give this woman a dollar. Why would you, su why would you do that and say that? This, this, it's not a rhetorical question. Why, why would you share something like that? You, for those of you that shared it, for those of you who have shared something similar, like... Because you believed in it. Because you believed in it. There, okay. What did you believe? So you want her to experience that freedom and you feel sympathetic or empathetic towards her for not being free to be able to express herself because even though you may not choose to. And I'm not going to say that I'm going to build a glitter machine and paint my front yard <laughs> rainbow colors right now. That's not my personal choice of expression, clearly, in terms of at least color structures. <laughs> but, you know, you wanted her to have that same freedom and you felt for her that something that you felt um, you had that she didn't have. Okay, that is a beautiful way to express it. And I think that is very much exactly what happened. People felt angry that this woman was being targeted for something so cheerful and funny and, and that her family should experience some of the same freedom of, of expression without dealing with an, an angry and certainly problematic, if not straight up outright bigoted neighbor um, who wouldn't name themselves. And it's irritating when someone does some, something anonymously, right? It wasn't probably just that you would feel for this woman and, and want her to have that expression, but also you wanted to kind of hit back at somebody that was that mean because you yourself have probably experienced that kind of anonymous passive aggressiveness before, yes? How many people in here have ever experienced somebody doing something rotten anonymously at them? A nasty note under the, there we go, a nasty note under the door. Somebody says something, well, I don't want to tell you who it was, but they, they're not a big fan of yours, you know, or whatever. Yeah. That kind of feeling right there, no one likes that feeling. Own up to the, the stuff that you want to say, right? So that is a reason why things like that go viral on the internet. You can't make it happen, but when it does, you can understand why. Virality is a really interesting concept on the internet, and it has to do, um, we, we can, it is closely related to a lot of phenomena in social science, which we can explain, but fail to predict with any degree of predictability. Does that make sense? We don't necessarily know that something's going to happen, but after it does, we know why it did happen, right? Okay, so that's the kind of thing that, that creates great crowdfunding campaigns, flash mobs like that. And then there's something that creates great crowdfunding campaigns that has nothing whatsoever to do with the impulse of the moment and instead is built over a lot of time, effort, and energy and careful planning. I pointed out that desktop laser printer situation here in Seattle to you all before, the Glowforge one. Did you all take a look at that crowdfunding campaign and where it ended up? That's Stan Shapiro's Glowforge, the, the desktop laser printer. That's the most successful 30-day crowdfunding campaign in history, okay? Uh, what, he raised like $29 million or something like that for it? 20, what's that? $27 million for that thing. It's, it was crazy successful. That is not accidental. Okay? That requires months, if not probably a year or more, of planning, of pre-sales, of advance, of setting up media. Of the, the, I, I, I have never gone to that level, but I understand the level of energy that goes into that. Dan's helped me with a couple of my crowdfunding campaigns, and he's an awesome human being. 
Um, but the, the kind of planning that goes into that involves setting it up and setting snowballs rolling in every direction. So the level of difference between those two things is the, the, is, is the difference between the amount of energy you could put into it and the amount of energy you would have to put into it to get a, a success that great, right? So those are some of really interesting crowdfunding campaigns to me, not just because of their virality and how interesting and cool they are, but also because of the relative levels of effort that have to go into them. So the second part is, wait, we did some of the crowdfunding campaigns and explain why some of them go viral. So I think the third point here, am I, am I right? Did I cover the second point? I think, good. So the third point was, how can you all do your own crowdfunding campaigns? And here's where we're gonna play talent show, okay? You're gonna be very surprised about your own ability to create a project and make it work on the internet. So who here can dance? Dance tango, whatever, what's that? Dance. Let's go with in a choreograph way in a performance sense. Tango, swing. I dance. Dance, like what kind? Um, church. Okay. Dance, uh, salsa. Salsa. Uh, Excellent. Okay. Now that's kind of fascinating. There's a couple of ingredients that go into. How about sing? Anybody else? I sing. sing. Awesome. People who sing. Good. What other talents do you all have? Who juggles? Admit it if you juggle. Come on. Uh-huh, that's what I thought. What other weird talents do we have in here? I can touch my nose with my tongue. You can touch your, touch your nose with your tongue. Right now? I'm looking for something you can sell on the internet, and while I feel you'd be extremely successful probably selling that on the internet, I don't think crowdfunding is the way to go for you on that one. Um, so, <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Yes. You can play games well. That's already being sold on Twitch. We're looking for something that's a deliverable, a goal that you can go for. Go ahead. Oh, you uh, said you had a talent? Yeah, I play guitar. Play guitar. Now, there we go. Guitar. Okay. What about those of you who have skill sets in foreign languages? What foreign languages some of you speak? Go ahead. What's that? Spanish. Spanish. Good. Okay. How many of you have ever done an instructional video or taught anybody anything ever? YouTube. YouTube. Good. I love it when people create crowdfunding efforts around the dissemination of knowledge. That's my personal thing. That's what I like to do. I know people that love to disseminate art that way. I think art is one of the most successful things that you can disseminate via a crowdfunding campaign because it is simple and deliverable. That doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean easy, but it's a simple concept to get across. I'm a painter and I would like to get my art up in a galley and it requires uh, a gallery and it requires a certain amount of funding to produce a series of, pa of paintings and the rewards for this Kickstarter are going to be prints from my paintings. So what you do is you figure out a way to tell a story about something that you want to create that has a clear defined end goal and you make people understand what that thing is that you want to set up and disseminate and then you give them a reason to sympathize with you, okay? You give them a reason why this is a thing that should exist in the world and does not yet. Like the, uh, the woman who had the Ohana lights in her front yard, people found a reason to sympathize with her because nobody likes a bully. No one likes an anonymous bully. Nobody likes that guy, right? So there's a reason why that succeeded because there was a reason to be sympathetic and a deliverable. The deliverable was, in fact, make your front yard yet more fabulous. What was it? It was the fabulously gay yard. Was that the hashtag for it? I'm pretty sure it was I just, fabulous. I just read it. Um, fabulously gay friend. Gay. Relentlessly gay. That's what it was. Oh, I loved this. I backed I backed that. Totally did. Um, the relentlessly gay front yard. And there's got to be a way to make that yard yet more relentlessly gay. And it was paint rainbows all over the roof or something like that. And so that's a clear deliverable. Paint a rainbow on the roof. I'm going to give $35,000 to make this woman paint a rainbow on her roof. It's a deliverable. And there's a story behind it. So if any of you were, gonna, were going to create with your art, with your music, with your singing, with your dancing, with whatever it is that you have as a personal talent, what is a talent that you think you could film and instruct people on? Anybody in here? Play an instrument. How to play an instrument. What instrument would that be? Any How about a really, really, no, I mean you personally. Do you play the, the, oh. the zither or the theremin or something like that? What's that? The automaton. The, the what? This. The automaton? 
Is that it? I don't know what that is. Name it out loud. Spell it. O T A M A T O N E. Otomatoni? Cool. Okay. See, now now we're talking. However the hell you pronounce that thing, that sounds really interesting. So, does anyone here know how to know how to play that? What's a thing you know how to play? Think exotic. Think something people haven't seen. Mandolin. Celtic flute. Anything. Okay, I cannot be staring at a classroom full of 25 people that have zero talents. Come on, what's a talent that you have? Draw, now drawing, there you go. What do you draw? Drawing people. Okay, what else do you draw? That's it, just people. Can you teach people how to draw people? Maybe. Maybe. I know you folks must have some talents. Come on, throw them out there. Yes. Well, I am a burlesque performer. You are a burlesque, there we go, a burlesque performer. Now that's freaking killer. Okay. Can you teach people how to put costumes together for burlesque? Ooh, that's one thing I'm terrible at. Okay, what is the good thing you are good at at burlesque? I'm pretty good at doing weird and funny stuff on stage. Weird and funny stuff on stage. Now that is going to sell just fine in a crowdfunding campaign. All right, so we've got weird and funny stuff stuff for burlesque. How do you put your act together? Um, it's, it varies. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a song that I hear and I'm like, I'm not really into that. Like, the okay. last act that I created, I did it because I just wanted to eat something All right. on stage. That is, you wanted to eat something on stage? Yeah. I was like, I want to dance around to Mambo music and end up eating and eat. something, and that's what I did. Okay, all right, all right. I'm, I'm going to skip right over everything I'm thinking right now and skip straight to the part where you do a documentary about putting an act together for a burlesque performance. Do you think that you could film yourself for a day putting an act together for a burlesque performance? How you are inspired by that? How you create the costume for it? How you pick the music for it? Why you get an idea? out of the middle of nowhere and you, you go, here's an idea, I'm going to make this happen and then I'm going to show you the, the five minute burlesque performance at the end that comes out of this experience. Could you do that? That is a crowdfunding campaign right there. That is awesome. You think that you could probably put that up on Kickstarter and just put a video of yourself up going, I'm a burlesque performer and I would love to just demonstrate to you how I put burlesque performances together and then at the end show you the performance itself filmed on stage. Do you think you could do that? That is a crowdfunding campaign, and there's no way you couldn't clear one to three thousand dollars for that on Kickstarter. Zero ways that you wouldn't be able to make that happen. So that is, I love crowdfunding campaigns for this reason because you see that's a clear deliverable. You can share something with people that no one's ever seen. But I've never seen a burlesque performer put together a performance before, and just look behind the scenes and go, "This is what it's like for her to put this together, to create these costumes, create this experience, and then deliver it to people." That's awesome. I'm going to post this video on YouTube and one of the comments is going to be, I want to see that Kickstarter. Okay, that's super cool. So that's the kind of thing that you look for is what do people, what is, what is about your life, about the things that you love, that you're part of, that you can give people to experience and show them behind the scenes, show them the journey of something. Do you get the idea what I'm talking about right now? If you can show something like that, that is a wonderful experience for people to see. And I just had this great conversation today with a woman that I know who is very much solidly in the millennial generation bracket. And one of the great pieces of that conversation was she said, it's really challenging to, to get jobs, to make your mark, to find a way to be known for the things that you do because there are so many voices out there. And I love the idea that you could take something like that and have this great unique voice and and get your name out there as somebody who gets to do something you love and wants to share it with people. That's a great experience. You look like you want to say something. You got this this face like I desperately want to say yes, exactly. You. Okay, you're not okay, good. I'm glad. <laughs> you're like oh. <laughs> wait. All right. Well, this is good. I'm I'm seeing these faces like oh. yes, go ahead. So, I, what I'm getting is uh -huh. that the storytelling part is mm -hmm. that I'm a burlesque dancer. Mm -hmm. The reward system is mm -hmm. I have these costumes you can order. To no, no, no. The, the, that is, you put your finger on the issue of crowdfunding. The, 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 the campaign is I'm, I'm a burlesque performer and I'm going to show you what it's like to create a performance. But the true reward has nothing really to do with the rewards that you list on, on the crowdfunding campaign. The true reward is being able to take a creative journey with someone to see how something is created from the very beginning. Does that make sense? Most of us never get a chance to do something like wonder how a music video is made. How do you make a guitar out of the middle out of nothing? How do you teach someone how to do something out of nothing? How do you draw a web comic? 
starting from nothing but an idea? How do you make a game? The question really isn't, the, the idea really isn't that I get a game at the end of it, but that I get to see what it's like to make a game out of nothing. And I know that I'm one of the people that helped to bring this thing into the world, right? You're one of the community, the people that helped to make something awesome happen. Do you all feel like this is something that you might be able to, to workshop out and do to create even a, there's nothing that says that every Kickstarter has to be an $80 million attempt, right? This can be a $400 Kickstarter. It can be a three. Believe me, if you've got aunts and uncles that like you, you're fine. All right. You can have 15 backers for your Kickstarter. That doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make it a, you know, if, if you've got something that you want to succeed at that you're going to do anyway, try funding it on Kickstarter and make, or whatever other platform, although the, the community managers on Kickstarter are really good. Um, Indiegogo tends to be more for causes. Kickstarter tends to be more for products, if that makes sense. There's a whole field of what platform you put your funding campaign on based on what you're going to do but basically if you're going to make a video like that put it on Kickstarter that's the place for it so the whole purpose here is get yourself to the place where you're going to do a thing anyway and then you maybe want to share it with people so put it up for a couple hundred dollars on Kickstarter and then fulfill it for those 15 people does that sound like something that you might want to give a shot to I will help each and every one of you put this stuff together and workshop these ideas out with you if you want to all right Nodding heads. This is what I like to see. Nodding heads. And also people who are like, hmm, I know a thing that I can do, but I don't want to admit it here. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> okay. Any last questions? Anything you want to know about crowdfunding? So the yes. Pledge is mm -hmm. the, the thing that people give you is they give you a little bit of money in exchange for behind the scenes access to watch you make something. And they may get a certain levels of a reward out of it, like I'm going to get the video or I'm going to get to be in the video might be, for instance, one of the big rewards. Like if you're in Seattle and you're the person that backs your, your burlesque performer Kickstarter um, to the tune of like $500, maybe you're the one who, um, maybe you have a, I don't know, a costume shop and you're the person who gets the rights to provide a costume for you during the, the, the campaign. What you do is you try to find a way to get people involved in what you're doing. If, you, um, if you're going to film that performance, then anyone who backs you in the Seattle area gets to come to that performance and sit there and watch, right? So that would be an example of something you would do. You're trying to involve people, bring them in, don't close them out. The, the campaigns that I see that are non-successful are ones that try very hard to keep the audience out, um, the, 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 the audience's dirty public fingers out of the pure vision of the artistic performance, right? Those are the ones that you, you look at it and you say to yourself, this person wants my money, but they don't want me to be involved in this in this project, really. They just, they want a paycheck from me, but they don't want any interaction with me. Don't do that. Involve people from the very beginning in the things that you're creating, and you'll get that support from them and that advocacy from them. That's the way that you do crowdfunding, all right? I, I want to see every one of you, I will give you a dollar. Anyone in this place, I mean, who, who wants to create a crowdfunding campaign, I will back you for a dollar. I'll be your, your first you know, backer on it, no problem. If, it's, if I like it or actually want the product, I might give you like $5 or, you know, a latte or something. <laughs> I'm not going to promise to back 25 Kickstarters right this second where there's like evidence for it later. Yeah? So it's kind of like, mm -hmm. say, if I had wanted to make uh, a long time ago, I wanted to yeah? make um, videos of artwork. Like videos of artwork. That might be an interesting way to go about it. It's very interesting. Now art. Good. But well, it's one of those times when you when you know that something is a great idea and you want to give it a shot. Maybe just try the little version of it first and see what happens. A lot of people turn this kind of thing into their career. It's certainly something that I love doing enough that I make it a major part of my life. Any last questions? Awesome. I will back you all for a dollar for the super secret awesome insider updates. <laughs>